Oh, hey there, it's spring. This is the perfect time of year to give our house plants some extra love. So today I wanted to share some of my top plant care tips and tricks, things I really wish I had known when I first started to build a plant collection, because I think if I had known these things, I maybe could have saved a few unfortunate plant souls from dying. So you'll be learning from my mistakes today, I hope. And today's video is also in partnership with our incredible friends over at Audible, but we're gonna chat more about them at the end. For now, let's dive right in. So I used to have a set day each week that I would call my plant watering day. No matter what, I would walk around the house on this day and I would water all the plants that I had. But one thing I think I didn't realize fully at that time was that not all plants have the same watering requirements and they might not necessarily need to be watered on a set day each week. So what this usually meant more often than not was that I was overwatering my plants. And that's something that I tend to do. I tend to overlove our plants to the point of killing them. So I think one of the best tips I ever learned was that we wanna let the soil of our plants get completely dry before we water it again. And in this way, we're preventing our roots from rotting, hopefully, and we're not kind of creating those moist conditions that certain bugs and insects love to thrive in. And so I think having a plant watering day is still really helpful. I still have one in the sense that it's just my set day where I remember to even walk around and check on the plants. And in the spring and summer, I have two plant watering days. But what it means is that I've got watering can in one hand, but before I water any plant with the other hand, I first check to see if the soil is dry. So the number one way I check to see if the soil is dry is with this trusty little finger. So this is the best and most affordable tool you will ever have to make sure you're not overwatering your plants. So I think what I used to do is I would just like look at the top of the soil and see that it was dry and that would kind of be an indication that I could water it or sometimes I'd very lightly touch the surface. But that's really not enough because the top of the soil dries out before the bottom of it does. So ideally what we wanna do is stick half or even all of our finger like right deep into the soil. See if it feels a little bit moist, if it is, is, then you don't have to water it. And if it feels like it's really dry like this one is, then you can go ahead and water it. The other thing you can also do is if your plants are quite small like this, you can even just lift it and tell by the weight itself. Over time, you'll kind of get a feel for your plants and what it should feel like. But if it feels very light, chances are, again, you can water it. But if it's feeling quite heavy at the base, then that probably means that there's moisture and water in there still. But what do you do in the case where you have like a plant that's really big and it's in this huge pot? You can't easily lift it. And I feel like putting your tiny finger in a pot that's like this big, it just doesn't suffice. So one tip that I learned that I thought was super helpful is that you can use like a skewer or a stick. Some people use um, wooden chopsticks and you can just insert it straight into the center of the pot and leave it there for a minute or two. It kind of reminds me of how in baking, you know how we use like a, a skewer or a toothpick to insert into the center of a muffin or a cake to see if it's cooked through into the center. It's kind of the same idea. So after the two minutes or so are up, if you take the wooden skewer out and if you see that there's some moisture and residue on it, then you can skip watering, but if it comes out dry, then it's a very good indication that you're ready to water that plant. So now we've checked the soil of our plants. We know it's dry and we are ready to water it. I think one of my rookie mistakes is that I would water one plant and then I would just move on to watering another one without waiting and checking to see have I maybe watered it too much or maybe even too little. It helps to know that plants absorb most of their nutrients and water from the root hairs. This is all throughout the soil, but it's in higher concentration near the bottom of a pot. And we also want to encourage that in the sense that if roots are going deep into the soil and all the way to the bottom, it helps to stabilize the plant so that it can stand upright. So knowing this, our goal then is we want to water the plant enough that we see some water emerging out from the bottom. Remember too then that it's really important that we choose pots that have drainage holes for this exact reason. And this is something we've explored in our previous plant care video. So I'll link that for you here in case you're interested. So now I've watered this plant a little bit and I'm not seeing any water emerging and it takes a few seconds sometimes, but if you still see nothing coming out, then you just wanna to top it up with a little bit more water. And then now that I see some water is emerging on the base plate, I know I've watered it sufficiently, but this is also where we risk overwatering. We do not want this to be sitting in a pool of water. So if you see that, you just drain it in the sink before you move on to watering the rest of your plants. What we can also do is to water our plants under a little shower, either in the tub or in the sink. You can just let the water run through the soil and then let the pots sit in the sink or in the bathtub to drain sufficiently before you then put it back. And as a bonus, using the shower head also helps to rinse away any dust that are on the leaves of our plants, which actually takes us to our next point. 
I think I used to hardly ever clean the leaves of my plants. I used to let them get really dusty, but periodically, every few weeks or every few months, we want to wipe the dust off of these leaves. This is especially true for plants that have really big leaves because they act like umbrellas and they catch a whole bunch of dust particles. And by cleaning off the dust, we're increasing the plant's ability to photosynthesize, which is how a plant makes food, right? So you can do this either in the sink or in the bathtub or just using a damp cloth with just a little bit of water, no soap needed, and just use this to periodically clean off the leaves of your plants. We'll especially want to also do this for plants that are in darker spaces in our homes because we want to maximize the amount of light that those leaves can absorb. When I first started getting plants, I didn't know that I had to necessarily give them fertilizer, which is also known as plant food, and you just add this straight into the water that you're giving your plants. And so it helps to do it, especially in these spring and summer months when plants are in their growing season. And it makes sense too, right? These plants are sitting in a pot in the same soil. After a while, it's gonna use up all of the nutrients that are in there, so we wanna replenish it every so often. But then I learned that there was this thing called plant food, and I was like, food, that's a good thing, right? So I started to give my plants a whole bunch of fertilizer, and it turns out you can can definitely overdo it. When you add too much fertilizer to the soil, it can burn the roots. That's gonna decrease the plant's ability to absorb nutrients, but you can also burn the leaves when you're watering it. So one tip to here is to try to avoid getting this water on the leaves and just aim straight for the soil if you can. And just be sure to follow the package instructions in terms of how much fertilizer to add per liter of water. When in doubt, it's better to under fertilize by a little bit rather than to over fertilize. So if you over fertilize your plant, you'll know because there's salts that are in fertilizers and there's gonna be this like salty crust that's gonna form on top of your soil. So essentially all we wanna do here is make sure that we're fertilizing our plants because it is important to replenish those nutrients, but just be careful not to overdo it. So sometimes the soil of plants get too compacted and this is normal. It happens when it's just kind of sitting in the same soil for a really long time. Um, and I used to never do anything about it, but I think it's really important to because we need air pockets in the soil. That way water and oxygen can get to the roots where it's needed. And roots do actually need oxygen in order to thrive. So if you notice that your soil is compacted, there's a couple things you can do. You can either take like a stick or a fork and you just want to kind of break apart the soil a little bit. That way we're creating those little air pockets. Or what we can do is just place the old soil with some fresh new soil and that'll help water and oxygen get to the roots where it's needed. So most plants that you get at a nursery are gonna come with this little tag and this tag is gonna tell you what lighting conditions it prefers and where in your house the plant wants to be. Now in case it doesn't come with this and when in doubt, most plants prefer to be in a very well lit space in your home, but most plants don't want direct sun rays right on their leaves. There's some exceptions to this, like for example, some tropical plants don't mind it, but especially if the leaves are delicate, you wanna keep it away from direct sun rays. I learned this the hard way because when I first started getting plants, I used to put them on the windowsill because I thought it looked really cute, but that particular windowsill had loads of light coming through it. And plants are much like humans, they can also get sunburned. So a lot of those plants had the leaves turn yellow and kind of eventually died. The other thing that can be helpful to know location wise is if you do have a plant that's in a low light location or like a darker corner of your room, they just don't thrive and grow as much. So this means we don't wanna fertilize them or water them as much, because from experience, I have definitely killed some plants that way. Another tip, when you're at the plant nursery, just inspect the leaves really closely. It's so easy to do, but very easy to forget because if you're gonna bring a plant home that's already got like little bugs on it, that's such a shame. So taking a few seconds just to check that while you're at the nursery can already make a huge difference. And then when you do bring your plants home, try to keep them away from other plants just for a few weeks just to make sure that if there is something on it and it grows and it, you don't want it to infect the other plants. So just keep them separate until you know it's healthy and then they can all live in harmony. So now we've talked about some tips on how to better take care of our plants, but this is also the perfect season to start propagating plants. So essentially making free plants out of plants that you might already have at home. So we've actually done a full video on how to propagate plants. So I'll link that for you here and at the end of today's video in case you're interested. And thank you again to our friends at Audible for partnering with us on today's video. I am so excited to tell you about this audiobook that I most recently listened to. It is hands down one of my new favorites. So it's a fiction called The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. And I listened to this audiobook in three days and I would have listened to it in a single day if I didn't have to work. And then I recommended it to my mom who listened to it in just two days, which I was so impressed with, but it's just that it's so engaging. So it's about this girl who is essentially between life and death. And she's given the opportunity to live 
alternate versions of her life based on having made different decisions. And this kind of concept is something that I've always been so fascinated about, you know? Like for example, what would my life have been like if I hadn't met Robin? Or if I'd chosen to stay in Canada and not move to the Netherlands? Or if I'd gone to medical school and didn't continue with pickup lines? And so it's just really fascinating to kind of explore that idea in this audiobook. I definitely recommend it. You can get the audiobook for free if you'd like by visiting audible.com forward slash pickup lines or you can get any other audiobook of your choosing plus you'll get a 30-day free membership which means you'll get access to the entire audible plus catalog and this is where members can go to get access to thousands of audiobooks just included right in your membership we've already gotten a couple dozen of audiobooks this way so be sure to check that out too again link in the description box below to learn more and hey thanks so much for hanging with us today i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did feel free to give it a thumbs up it always means a lot when you do and I think that's it. Pick up Lime signing off. We'll see you in the next video. Oh, hey there. This next tip is just for fun. This is really aesthetics. This is not about keeping a plant alive or losing it. But if you remember, periodically rotate your plants because they grow towards the light. And if you rotate them, you keep them symmetrical. This is not symmetrical, evidently. This is the plant I overwatered. I mean, it's aloe vera. It's a succulent. I should have known better. But the leaves were turning brown and I was just like, oh no, it's dying. I should give it more water. But the leaves were turning brown because I had given it too much water to begin with. And then you know when you lift it, you know, it feels heavy at the base. So it's like, oh, I should have known. It's the plant so the pant can stand up, right? The pant. So we've checked the soil. We know it's dry. We're wet. <laughs> we're ready. We're ready to water it. We're ready.